Hi there, YouTube family. Today what I'm going to try and show you is how to can green beans. If you wanted to begin pressure canning, green beans is probably the best produce to start with because it's very easy to do. Some things you're going to need. You're going to need snipped green beans. Brian and I picked about 8.8 .8 pounds of green beans yesterday and then just while we were sitting watching some YouTube videos we snipped our green beans and this is just kind of what they look like when they're snipped. You want them about that size and then what I'm doing now is just washing them and getting them ready to put into jars. You will need, you see that I've already started packing the jars, but you will need to sterilize your jars. How you, and you can use pint jars or quart jars. Basically how you sterilize your jars is you get a pot of boiling water and you dip your jar in it and bring it out and then just let it drain to room temperature. You're going to need canning rings and canning, canning lids. What you do with your canning lids while you're packing your beans is you put your canning lids in a pot of water and then you bring that pot of water up to a boil. Once it's boiling, you let it stop and then you just let your canning lids rest. While you're packing your beans, you will want to get pots of water boiling. Mine have already come to a boil. You can see this one's still boiling a little bit um, to use to fill your jars with. Also, your pressure cooker. This is the type of pressure cooker that I use. You will want to fill it about halfway with water and get that water hot and get it boiling while you're packing your can of beans. You will also need some canning salt and I'll show you what to do with that in a little bit and you'll need just some tools to pull out your lids and put in the water into your jars. Okay, I also have this handy dandy little funnel that helps me pack jars. I've got this jar started, I'll finish it and then I'll show you how I pack a jar from start to finish. Okay, I take a jar, I put my funnel on it and a lot of times I put it in a bowl because if beans drop, then I don't lose the beans all over the place and I can get them later. So I just start putting the beans, I grab beans out of the water and I start putting them in the bowl. I'll need to get a little bit more. I kind of double wash my beans if you're wondering what I'm doing right here. So I get them in the jar. You see I've kind of overdid the jar, but I do that a little bit and then I shake my jar. And if you can see I've shaken my jar and my beans have actually gone down. Because I want to get as many beans in that jar as I can. And then once I've done that, I'll just start packing beans into that jar and kind of pushing them down in there. Leaving about a half to a quarter inch of head space. You need to leave just a little bit of room on the top. You don't want your beans going all the way to the top. And that's how you pack a jar of beans. Okay, after you have all your jars filled with your beans, and just to remind you, these are pint jars, you need to add a little bit of canning salt, which I showed you earlier, to your jars. I put it in a smaller container because it's easier to measure it out. For a pint jar, you use one half teaspoon of salt and you put that in every jar. Okay, after you've done that, now you have to add water to your jar. And your water needs to be boiling. I have a teapot over there that's already got some boiling water going, so I'm gonna go grab it and bring it over and show you how, what to do. Okay, my water is boiling and you just simply pour it into each jar until you're about a quarter inch from the edge. I see this one has some beans kind of sticking out so I'm going to shove those down so they're not sticking out and they won't hit the lid. Just about a quarter inch. Same here with these beans. I'm going to try and push those down a little bit. Quarter inch from the lid from the rim of the jar, I should say. Okay, I've run out of water with my teapot. 
So I'll set that aside. I've got some boiling water on the stove. And I have this handy dandy little ladle that my hubby got me for canning. And I'll just ladle out the boiling water I have on the stove. If you have a couple teapots, you could use those and just get your water boiling in your teapots. It's a little handier to, to put your water in that way. And this is actually called the hot packing method because you're packing with hot water. Just a little bowl. Okay, now from there, I've got the salt in, I've got the water in, now I have to put the lids on. I've got my pot of boiling lids here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've got my lids that are sitting in hot water. Before I do that, something you must do, it's very important, is make sure that you take and wipe just the rim of your jars because if you have any salt on there, it's not going to allow that lid to seal. So you just go around and make sure there's nothing on the rims of those jars. And I just take a little paper towel and I rotate it. I saw on this one I did have some salt right on there. I'm glad I caught that. You just rotate your paper towel around to a clean spot. Now if you're doing salsa or something like that and you're cleaning your, your paper towel, you'll have to change it a lot more often because you'll get tomato all over it. But when you're doing green beans, like I said, green beans is relatively easy. I have maybe a little bit too much water in there. I'm just going to pull a little bit out of there. Wipe my rim. I got my paper towel pretty wet, so I'm going to change it while I wipe off these rims. Okay, now I'm going to take my, I'm going to put a hot pad right here, put my pan, my lid pans right there. And how you do this is you simply, this has a little magnet on it, it collects the lid. You can do it with a fork or um, some tongs also. But this was another handy dandy little gift that my husband gave me and it helps with getting these lids out of the jar. And then you tighten, you put your, you put your lid on, you put your rim on and you just tighten it till, just a hand strength. You don't want to over tighten these. So you just tighten them till they're tightened down. You don't have to wrench on them or anything like that. They feel better if you don't. I typically use ball jar lids, but you can use cur. Ball or cur will work about the same way for your jar lids or ball jars for your jars. Whoops, that magnet caught that ring. So either one, they'll work about, they work the same way. And they both are equal in quality, I think. And you can also buy, if you don't, if you haven't already bought in jars, you can buy packs with, with jars that have their lids and rings already connected to them. Now don't be fooled in thinking that those are sterilized. You still need to sterilize those jars. Okay, I have ended up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 pints of beans. For some reason, I thought maybe I'd get about 22, but I didn't. And you will see that I actually have that has kind of cooled off a little bit, not a problem. I have about three lids left. They have not been used. All I'm going to do is dry them off and then let them cool, and I'll put them right back in the box that I got them from, and I'll use them again the next time that I can. Just having them in that boiling water is not gonna hurt them as long as you haven't tried to seal them or screw them onto a jar. So I'll just let them dry, cool down, put them back in their box. Okay. 
From here, I've got my jars ready to go into my pressure cooker. Okay, I have one more handy dandy little tool and it is a jar lifter. And all I do is I take my jars, grab them like that, and I'm gonna put them right into that boiling water that's in that pressure canner. And mine actually double stacked will fit 20 jars or 20 pints of beans, my pressure canner will. Once you get all your jars in there, I'm kind of disappointed. I really wanted one more pint just to make sure that I had a full canner. But when mine holds 20 pints and I only have 19, I don't think I'm doing too bad. Okay, from there I have my jars in there and I'm going to put my lid on. Oh, wait a minute, one more thing. I need to add a little bit of hot water to my pressure canner because one thing I always make sure is that I have my lids just all covered with water and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, if you can see this or not, with all of these, I have my lids all covered with water. Water, You don't see any of them sticking out, except for maybe a little bit right here on this one. But that will be okay. So, try to get your lids covered. Now what I'm going to have to do is put the lid on the pressure canner, and I'll show you that too. Okay, my pressure canner has some arrows that you line up. And you line that up and you close it tight and then there's a little knob that you put on here to hold the pressure uh, where did I set that right here so the little knob you put on I've got it actually up on high my stove I have the temperature up on high and now I just watch this pressure gauge and I wait for the pressure gauge to get up to about 10 because green beans you pressure can 10 pounds of pressure for 20 minutes. Okay, I will show you what happens when it gets up to 10 pounds of pressure. Uh, and that's probably gonna take probably 15 to 20 minutes in itself. Okay, it has been about 30 minutes and you can see the pressure still has not quite come up. But something you will see, on the lid there is this little button. And when you start, that button is down. When it's starting to build, build pressure, that button will pop up like that and it will stay up. As it's getting there, it'll kind of just jiggle a little bit and then it'll pop all the way up and then it'll stay up and that will seal. And when that seals, it won't be long and you'll start seeing your pressure start rising. So right now I'm just waiting for my pressure to keep going up. It's been about 30 minutes so far. We'll see how long it takes to get up to pressure. Okay, it's been about five minutes, and as you can see, the pressure finally is starting to rise. Once that little knobby pops up, the pressure will rise, and it won't take too terribly long. And when it gets up to that 10 pounds of pressure, which I'll show you in a minute, you will wanna turn your heat down and kind of watch it for a little while to keep it consistently at that 10 pounds of pressure. Okay, it's been about five minutes and I'm at about seven pounds of pressure right now. So it's not gonna take long at all for it to get up to that 10 pounds of pressure. But something that my husband reminded me of to let you guys know that we live in Ohio. So in Ohio, with the altitude that we're at, you do can green beans at 10 pounds of pressure for 20 minutes if you're doing pints. If you're doing quarts, it's about 25 minutes. But if you live at a different altitude, Make sure you check your canning manual as to how long you need to pressure cook, how what, what pressure and how many minutes. Okay, it should only take just a few more minutes and I'll be at 10 pounds of pressure and I'll show you what I do when I reach there. Okay, that was about five minutes and as you can see, we are at 10 pounds of pressure. Now I'll show you what I do from here. Okay. With that at 10 pounds of pressure, I take my heat all the way from high and I typically move it just a bit lower than medium. And I kind of watch my pressure gauge 
And if it kind of is staying there and not moving higher, I keep it kind of there. And I'll show you what I mean by that. You can see from here that my pressure gauge is kind of going up. So I don't want it to keep going up. So I am going to actually turn my burner down all the way just to the warm simmer section right now because I don't want that heat getting up too much higher and with, with that happening I'm going to set my timer for 20 minutes and start my timing down for 20 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure so I've got 10 between 10 and 11 pounds right there that's not going to hurt anything but I turn it way down and I'm going to come check in just a couple minutes just to make sure that that pressure is staying at 10 pounds because I turned it down so low I don't want it to drop but I know as low as I have it's probably not going to go any higher so I'll come check this in just a couple minutes but I can multitask while I'm waiting for all of this while I was waiting for it to come up to pressure I cleaned up the kitchen a little bit took care of all the stuff I use for canning reorganized where I'm going to set my cans so you can multitask while this is happening because it does take just a little bit. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes and I'm checking my pressure and it's kind of right there at 10. Maybe just dropping just a little bit more than I want it to. So I just crank the heat up just a little bit on the cooker and on the stove. And probably in another 10 minutes it'll be just fine and I can turn the heat off and then wait for the pressure to come down. Okay, I have reached my 20 minute time frame, so I'm just gonna turn my timer off and I'm gonna completely turn the heat off. Now at this point, you can't just go to your canner, open it up and take the jars out. You have to let the pressure come down. And so you just gotta let the heat come down. What I like to do is because I've got a glass top stove, I like to take my canner off where that heat source is. Um, if you have a gas stove, you can just turn it right off and your heat source will be off. It won't continue to heat. When you have an electric stove, a glass stove top, you still retain some heat there. So I need my sweetheart to come and help me move this because this is pretty heavy and I don't have a whole lot of upper body strength. So my hubby's going to come and just move this off the burner that is on over so that I can just let, let the pressure come down without the heat. I've been working in the yard all day. This is hot. I need a pad. Alright. Oh, I'm getting old. Okay, I'll just let this set here now and let the pressure come down. And I will tell you, it will probably take a good hour for your pressure to come down. Okay, see you in about an hour. Okay, as you can see, the pressure has completely dropped. The needle is down at the bottom. But I'm noticing that my little button here is still popped up. My pressure isn't completely down until this drops. When this button drops, then I know my pressure is down. Okay, finally my little thing has gone down. And another way to check is if I lift this and there's no shh, then I know that that is completely done. So now I'm ready to take the cans out of the water. Okay, sorry about the costume change, but I decided while my pressure cooker was depressurizing that I would just go ahead and get a little workout in today. So now I'm just gonna open up my canner. I'm gonna put some hot pads on simply because the steam coming out of here is still going to be pretty hot and I just want to be careful. So move that over to the sink, get that out of the way. And then I grab my handy dandy jar grabbers and just remove my jars. Now I realized something that I did this time around when I can that I forgot because I don't typically video when I can. And I forgot to put a little bit of vinegar in my canning water. I typically do that because it keeps any of the calcium deposits that want to form on the outside of your jars 
getting on your jar. So I kind of forgot that this time. So I'm going to probably end up with a little white residue on these jars. What I will do though, when they're dry and cool, I'll take a paper towel, I'll dip it in some vinegar, and I'll wash the outsides of my jars because I like shiny, clear jars after I'm done canning. It just makes me feel good. Now, if I show you this jar, and I'm gonna kind of bring it close, you can see how the beans have floated to the top. That's kind of why you wanna pack your beans in there as best you can, because they will kind of shrink up and float to the top, and you wanna get as many beans in there as you can. If you wonder why I'm tipping the jars, I'm just draining the water off the lids as I'm pulling them out. So they're not dragging water everywhere. And you may think, well that's common sense, but if you've never canned before, sometimes it's not. show you the difference in this jar. There's a little bit of the beans that floated up, but they are pretty tight to the bottom, so I must have packed that jar really well. Okay, so I have all my jars out of the canner. Now I just need to wait for them to cool, and as they, will, as they cool, the lids will slowly go pop, pop, and all of my jars will seal, hopefully. Okay, have a great day. All right, this is it for my canning video. Um, thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, just go ahead and leave some comments below, and I'll answer them if possible. Okay, bye-bye.